Further debate. The member from Guelph. Speaker, I rise today to speak on Bill 269, the government's budget bill. And Speaker, it's not even been a month since this bill was introduced, and it is already out of date and inadequate in dealing with the crisis we face in Ontario today. The chair of the government's science advisory table predicted that Ontario was headed for a disaster back on February 11th if the Premier eased restrictions. Speaker, the restrictions were eased and the crisis is here. A crisis, a third wave crisis, that's barely mentioned in the budget. As a matter of fact, the budget cuts $4.8 billion in next fiscal year, primarily due to reductions in COVID funding, literally a few days before we've hit the worst wave of the pandemic. Speaker, on March 24th, when the budget was introduced, 333 people were in ICU. Today, over 770. Less than a week after the budget was introduced, the Premier, or actually a week and a day after, sorry, the Premier pulled an emergency break. A week later, he issued an emergency order and a stay-at-home order. Less than a week later, and a day after we were told the schools were safe to keep open, the Premier announced the schools would be closed. And then last Friday, we had the Premier making announcements of further restrictions that the science table didn't even ask for, and we didn't get the restrictions that the table did ask for. And so, Speaker, if we're truly going to protect people's health and the economy, which the budget says that's what it's designed to do, then I would respectfully request the members opposite to make some significant changes to this budget to address the crisis that Ontario is in today and to especially address the advice of the province's science advisory table, especially the information they released earlier today. And so, Speaker, where does that begin? It begins with safe workplaces. The scientists, the public health officials, virtually everybody in Ontario has said that we are not going to get COVID under control if we don't have safe workplaces. So what does that mean? It means seamless, immediate paid sick leave for vulnerable workers. It means paid time off for vaccines. It means closing workplaces that are not really essential. It means mandating medical grade PPE in those workplaces that are open and deploying rapid testing. It means targeting strategically on-site mobile vaccine clinics in those essential, most vulnerable workplaces. Speaker, it also means reversing the $790 million cut to education during the third wave of a pandemic. If we want schools to be open, we have to make the investments in those schools. Speaker, it also means tripling the Ontario Business Support Grant. The budget doubles it, and that was maybe appropriate for the second wave, but we're now in the third wave, and so many small businesses are barely hanging on. So let's have a budget that actually triples the grant and expands the eligibility to include so many of those small businesses that I'm sure are reaching out to all of our offices who are falling through the cracks or experiencing challenges through the application process. Speaker, the budget does promise four hours of care in long-term care, something I've been advocating for for a long time, and it's unfortunate the previous government was unable to deliver on that. But, Speaker, we can't wait another four years for the money to deliver on four hours of care. Elders and the people who care for them deserve better. Speaker, people who are on social assistance need help, especially people on Ontario Disability Support Payments. There is no increase for people on ODSP, even though their cost of living has gone up with having to buy things like PPE, hand sanitizers and other things, in some cases ordering in deliveries, paying more for food. Speaker, the uh, places in our communities that oftentimes people on ODSP would go to for additional support or help, or maybe to earn a little extra income to supplement their monthly allowance or clothes, they need 
help. Speaker, I assumed that this budget would include a chapter on housing, given all the tent cities we see um, communities across the province. Instead, it had a page on housing. We were facing a housing crisis before COVID, and COVID has exposed the significance of that crisis, and yet the budget doesn't deal with it. Speaker, the government talks a lot about mental health supports, and I would urge them to accelerate funding for mental health supports because people need those supports now. And so if the government truly wants to protect people in the economy, reverse the $4.8 billion cut, people may say, well, how do you pay for that? And I would say every business person knows that you sometimes have to make strategic investments that are smart investments that have a return on investment. And that's exactly what investing in dealing with this third wave will do for the people of Ontario. Thank you, Speaker. We now have an opportunity for questions. I recognize the government house leader. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to uh, drill down on one point that the, the member raised, and it was on uh, uh, the the hours of care the, in, in long-term care homes, uh, the 4.5 uh, hours that uh, he mentioned. Uh, uh, there's been a significant investment made in the health human resources side, so I'm wondering what specific advice he has with respect to to the, improving the health and human resources side. We know that, it's, uh, that it takes time to actually uh, to get to new PSWs through the system. It also takes a, a significant amount of time on the construction side so that we can reduce the wards from four down to uh, the ward rooms from four down to two. Uh, and the advice that has been given is that uh, the time uh, that it would require to do it properly, which is, is, has been put in the budget, it'd take a, number of, a couple of years in order to do that. What would the, the member specifically suggest in order to speed that up with, a, really with, a, with an eye on the health human resources side of it? From Guelph to respond. I appreciate the member opposite's question and uh, remind the members that the government's own staffing report in long-term care came out over the summer recommending hiring additional staff. The estimated cost of that is $1.9 billion. The budget reflects that, but it doesn't allocate the money until the fiscal year 24-25. I would allocate the money in this fiscal year because the member's absolutely right. It takes time to hire people. And if we're gonna hire and train people, we need to let them know that there's gonna be a permanent increase in their pay, and we need to let them know that the money's gonna flow in this fiscal year so our elders have the four hours of care they deserve. Next question, the member for London Fanshawe. Thank you, Speaker. I'm glad we're talking about long-term care because we know long, since long time uh, past that the NDP, the champion of long-term care, been fighting for long-term care changes four hours, point one hours of care, taking profits out of long-term care and increasing those wages. Just today in the pro, uh, progressive press, uh, we have here, uh, press progressive, excuse me, we have here a uh, headline, re or the story reads, corporate directors at Chartwell, one of Ontario's largest for-profit care homes, companies voted to give its executive millions in bonuses while recommending against a living wage for the company's hard-hit frontline workers. So can you speak to how important it is, if we're looking for funds for helping um, sustainability in uh, the workforce in long-term care and where the funds could come from, could you speak to that article and maybe enlighten the government how we could do it? Back to the member from Guelph. Yeah, I appreciate the question from the member. And I thought one of the tragedies of the first wave was that while so many elders were tragically dying in long-term care, bonuses were paid to executives in long-term care. And so the bottom line is, is we have to prioritize care over profits. And at the very least, while we transition to having a non-profit public long-term care system, we need to put conditions around the way government money is spent, stronger conditions. I realize there are conditions in place now because paying out those kinds of bonuses when our long-term care homes are facing a humanitarian crisis, when the people who care for our loved ones are not even being paid a, a living wage and in some cases not even being offered full-time work please. or guaranteed benefits is unacceptable. We can do better, Speaker. Thank you. The next question, the member for Willowdale. 
Uh, thank you very much, Speaker. I'll be quick. I see there's not much time left, and uh, the member from Guelph knows I have a lot of respect for him. Had some great conversations. I know he has a small business background, and small business is important to him. Obviously, a difficult time for small businesses. And I appreciate the member during committee called for you know expanding grant support programs for other industries like the tourism sector, and we did that in this budget, the, the hospitality sector uh, that we know has been hit hard, and we doubled the small business grant. And, and the member says that he's calling for a tripling of the small business grant, and, and I, I respect where he's coming from. But then my question is then, you voted against the doubling of the small business grant. It's never too late to do the right, right thing. Will the member vote in favor of doubling the small business grant and expanding supports to the tourism industry? Thank you. Back to the member from Guelph to respond. So first of all, Speaker, in a $186 billion spending plan, there will be some things in there you support. I would argue probably all of us support, but a budget is about who we are as a province, what we prioritize, the kind of Ontario we want to live in, the kind of ways we want to care for our neighbours and people in our communities. And when the budget falls short of that, my job in opposition is to hold the government accountable for that, and I can't support a budget that doesn't provide what the people of Ontario need today. Thank you. Further debate? 